What's happening, y'all? It's me, resident super villain, Mr. J. Washington, and I am here with my review for Bullet Train. Now, if you have not seen this movie yet, come on back because it will be spoilers. Thank you to everybody who's been watch, watching and rocking with your boy. Been waiting for more reviews. I had to go see some things. If you don't know personally, I've been dealing with a lot of death, friends, and family. So it's been kind of hard to get out to see everything I want and then come back and make reviews and have that enthusiasm on top of regular work with everything else. So, But I'm here. We're going to just, for the lack of better words, just start that and going to get to what this is. Uh, let me give you my overall thoughts on this film. First and foremost, it's a movie. It's the movie. It's. I saw a little bit of the trailers, right? I didn't do a reaction to the trailer. And I was like, okay, this just looks like some bang bang action type, jokey type deal, right? So I didn't go into this expecting, an, as they say, an Oscar bait film. I didn't go into this expecting, man, it's going to be the greatest movie of the summer, greatest ride of the summer. I didn't go in there expecting that. I went and was like, yo, this is probably just going to be. A dumb, fun-ass time. And honestly, that's what it was. Brad Pitt is Ladybug. is like, it's weird because it's like he's supposed to be super unlucky and charming and just the way he is and trying to calm himself. I I, I, I told it again to remember, y'all remember Bad Boys 2 when Martin said he was working on his stress and anger and everything. He was woo and everything. He was in his therapist. That's what Brad Pitt's Ladybug, who is, that's his new code name given, is kind of like, and I was like, okay, cool. Of course, we know everything takes place on the train. You know, we know all the major players that we saw. We were going to get Bad Bunny, uh, Brian Tyree Henry, Aaron Taylor Johnson, uh, Karen Fukunawa, uh, Hiroki Sonata, Andrew Koji. Man, you get so many people in this movie. Uh, Sandra Bullock, Zazie Beats, Channing Tatum pops up. And it's the wildest fucking cameo ever because Brad Pitt's character, remember, spoiler alert, Brad Pitt's character is stealing a briefcase with money in it. You know, this is his job by his employer, uh, played by Sandra Bullock. He's stealing a briefcase, and while he's stealing the briefcase, he's stolen the briefcase from Lemon and Tangerine, who are played by Brian Tyree Henry and Aaron Taylor Johnson, respectively. They are looking for him, and then they find out what he looked like through Joey King. She plays the prince. They find so while uh, Brad Pitt's going through the car, he's trying to hide. He needs to switch clothes. He sees Channing Tatum. He starts offering Channing money. Channing's like for sex stuff. I don't know if I want to do sex stuff. And then when Aaron Taylor Johnson's character walks up on him, he's like, "Is this about the sex stuff?" Because I'd have probably been into it. You're like, what? Why the fuck is this a thing? Uh, the the action sequences, I will admit, on this film are dope. If if nothing else, if nothing else, the action sequences at the violence level is way up here. There's a lot of times I, I was at the theater with one of my homies, and there was a couple times both of us went, oh, shit! Because, like, you don't expect it to be that high, but it gave you what it wanted. Now, as far as, like, again, story, dialogue, I spent ha over three quarters of this movie thinking, wait, did Brian Tyree Henry really study a whole British accent that keeps slipping out every six seconds for this role? I love this man as Paperboy. I love him as Fastos in The Eternals. I love watching his career grow and develop and all of us being a part of this journey with him. But the, the roles, I was like, yo, okay, first of all, they call this man Lemon. I digress. He has an affinity for Thomas the Tank Engine. Nope, not doing it. But then the British accent, I was like, so this is this is what we doing? I didn't know that Aaron Taylor Johnson was British. That I didn't know. I was like, so both of them just going to put on British accents? Because, again, I remember being introduced to Aaron Taylor Johnson from Kick-Ass. That's when I got introduced to him. Uh, then to turn around and see him play Quicksilver, you know, and now doing this, and then he's going to be Craven the Hunter, which I know is going to be abysmal, but I digress. Um, so having that, Andrew Koji, I've become a fan of his through Warrior. If you have not seen Warrior on HBO Max while it's still there, the way the curtain shows, 
please go check out season one and two of Warrior. Him as Assam is amazing. So his relationship with Hiroyuki Sonata, who we all got familiar with seemingly through Mortal Kombat, is just great. I could do a whole other movie with just the two of them. And I'd be satisfied, to be quite honest with you. But there's so many moving pieces. You find out that a bunch of these people are trying to get to this one big Yakuza boss named the White Death. The White Death is this six foot six Russian who info, who got into the Yakuza, ended up taking over from the dude who was the head of the Yakuza and all this other shit. The White Death is Michael Shannon in the most long flowing, check out my beautiful lock of hair. We, there are scenes where he has Fabio type blowing hair and I'm like, I don't know if I need to see this on Michael Shannon, but I digress again. Then you have his relationship with him and Hiroki Sonata, who they both used to work for the main triad boss when Shannon's character committed the uh, mutiny, if you will. Who else? Uh, oh, yeah. Logan Lerman is in this as as Michael Shannon. The, for, like Again, the cast of this movie is bananas. Like I stated names. You find out in the beginning that Brad Pitt's character, the reason he's on this train is because he's filling in for another agent named Garber. Garber got sick with a stomach bug. So, again, spoiler alert, the White Death set all the events that happened on this train in motion. Long story short. But Garber, who he was really looking for, is actually is the, is the agent he was looking for, not... Brad Pitt's character, he was looking for Garver. Garver is played by Ryan Reynolds. I said, what? This is one of those movies that is like, yo, if we can get them on set for a day, just to do this little quick thing, that's all we need. We don't need much out of them, just need a day out of them. Boom, plug them in here, plug them in there, everything. Um, But it just, again, it adds to like, why the hell are all these cameos? And again, some, some of them work. Bad Bunny plays a assassin named the Wolf, who I don't know why they made his origin from Mexico, and I guess because they wanted to do the Mexican cartel, okay? But because he's from Puerto Rican, if I'm not mistaken, and like you could have done something with his Puerto Rican heritage because he's super proud to be Puerto Rican. But he grows up, becomes this assassin, he kills these people, and at the day of his wedding, his wife and everybody else is murdered. They're poisoned. And you kind of see a part in the wedding where he gets bumped and some wine spills on his white suit. And you see the hair, and I told my homie, I was like, that's Brad Pitt's character. Because you didn't even see it at the time. You just saw the hair. I was like, that's Brad Pitt that bumped him. Pretty sure. Come to find out, the person who poisoned him is an assassin known as the Hornet. The Hornet is played by Zazie Beetz, who has been in this character, this Momongo uh, costume character on the whole train. They have assaulted this character in the suit, punched everything, the whole the whole movie damn near until Zazie comes out. Zazie has a fight with uh, Brad Pitt, which is a dope fight. Also, again, there's so many bits and pieces. Earlier in the uh, movie, while Andrew Koji is seeing his son in the hospital who was pushed off the roof of a building, on the TV talks about the escaping of a boom slaying snake. It's one of the most poisonous, de deadliest snakes ever. It was stolen, right? The boom slang ends up on the train and gets freed, right? And is moved around the train. The Hornet has managed to harvest the boom slang venom and uses it to poison victims. The thing is, if it poison, if the, you are bitten by the boom slang, you have 30 seconds to administer the antidote or your the anti-venom or you're done. So during the fight with Zazie and Brad Pitt, Zazie tries to stab Brad Pitt with the venom has a vial, you know, needle full of the venom. Stabs him with the needle, but doesn't get to push the plunger down, right? So they both look for a second. The needle stabbed in Brad Pitt's hand. They both look. Brad Pitt takes the needle, flips it up, st sticks it in Zazie Beat's arms, pushes the plunger, and she's like, "Oh fuck!" And so Brad Pitt is like, "Yo, don't you have the anti venom?" And she realizes it. So when she pulls it out, they have a quick little tussle. Brad Pitt takes it and stabs himself. And then she starts bleeding out and dying. He was like, oh, damn. Don't you have two of them? And she's like, no, bitch. 
And it's just, it's so ugly. It's funny and it's stupid at the same time. She starts convulsing, going there, through, going through everything, dying and falling over shit. And Brad Pitt was like, "You should, you should plan better." And it's just there's certain things in in, in which I've seen some reviews that are like, "This doesn't hold up to the level in which you expect." And I think that is being said because the level of talent. I always think that when we see these movies that are chocked full of established, known film talent film and TV talent that we're expecting the highest caliber of performances that damn near make every movie Oscar bait, right? But in some instances, I think there's some movies where it's just meant to be fun. And I think that's what this is. I was like, it's a movie. It's it's a fun, dumbass ride. There's a lot of stuff that happens that you're like, this, this couldn't be. Like after Brad Pitt has his interaction with Bad Bunny, Brad Buddy gets murdered, okay? I'll just, you've got to find out how. But when he gets murdered, what does he do? He puts him on the train, sits him down, tries to sit him up to where he looks like he's asleep and not dead. And so, again, trying to have, the, there's these funny comedic moments, because that's what this is, an action comedy movie. There's a moment where Logan Lerman's character, he's murdered, and they pop, rope, pop him up and put on these dumbass kids' cat-like sunglasses to cover his eyes to look like he's sleeping. I don't know if, like I said, if a lot of people expected this movie to just be, oh, I expected greater performances and better blah, 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 and just instead of went in and was like, this is a stupid ass ride and I'm just going to watch it. Because I think that's all it's meant to be. I think this is meant to be one of those movies that you take two hours out of your day and just forget about everything else. You, you, you might say, yo, this is stupid. This is dumb. Why is this happening? Why is that happening? But at the end of the day, you're like, it's okay. And then you realize you wasted two hours. Your mind didn't worry about nothing else because you were focused on that. And so I think that's the deal with this film. I'm not finna go in all the logistics of what David Leach did, what the photography did. Again, the photography, I think, is done well. The cinematography, I think the, the choreograph, the, the fight choreographs are done phenomenal. Um, a lot of the action sequences are great. I'm, I'm here for them. Different things that happen. The jokes, some jokes hit, a lot of them do. The twist and turns that you see, there's some you see twist and some you don't see. And so there's so many elements to this movie that could be another reason why some reviews are like, I don't, I, uh, because there's so much, there's so many moving parts on a moving train at the same time. You know, everything has to come together different ways. So if I summarize everything I've said that sounds like a jumble that is this movie Bullet Train, watch it for yourself. Watch it for yourself. Remember, you were going to take about two, two hours, maybe 20 minutes out your day. You're just going to enjoy, just enjoy the fact you're done with everything. Nothing else matters but what's going to be on that screen in front of you. You see what I'm saying? We're, we're so, we've gotten to the point now with so many films and TV shows and myself included where I start watching things for Easter eggs and, oh, is this a clue to what's going to happen later instead of letting certain things play out? Of course, I said it earlier with the, Bad Bunny, Brad Pitt hair situation, but it was one of those things that was setting it up. It was telling you what the story was. But overall, I'm learning to just watch things to watch them. And I think we have to start getting back to that. Where we watch things to watch them and not try to be over analytical, super critical, and everybody trying to be a critic and a pundit and things like that and just enjoy some shit for the fun of it. I know y'all like, well, ain't that what you're doing? You, you you being a film critic, film pundit, whatever, and you're talking about it, yes. But I also try to tell y'all one thing in particular every single time for every review I do. No matter what I say on these videos, it's going to be my opinion first and foremost, which is the number one thing. And I always want you, secondly, to formulate your own opinion. But also, as you formulate an opinion, make sure your opinion is formulated by reason and rationale not by emotion, right? I always say this, you know, go in to watch something for yourself to enjoy it. Don't go in off of what you've heard other people say, what you've read other people say, and then formulate your opinion from there because you'll dilute your own opinion. You may not think you won't, but you will because that will subconsciously resonate in the back of your head. Again, I saw different things about it, not just like, yo, I don't care. 
I've gone, I've been going through so much death of friends, lost family, and dealing with so much stress. I need a getaway. So none of that mattered. And I know everyone won't have the same situations that lead up to them seeing the film the same way. But what I'm saying is, you can forget the world and just watch this movie. It's stupid ass fun. Y'all saw Mr. And Mrs. Smith. Stupid ass fun. The story was cool, everything. And then there was a few things some people didn't get and didn't rock with, but it was just stupid fun. And that's what matters. I want to know if you've seen it, though, at the end of the day. What do you say? What do you think in the comments down below? As I say, with any video I drop, keep it simple. We talking about movies and TV shows. Uh, sometimes it's talking about comics. We're talking about a movie about assassins on a bullet train that involves Michael Shannon with long hair. Calm down. All right. Let me know your thoughts. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok at Mr. J Washington, M-R-J-A-Y. You should know how to spell Washington. If you don't, get your life together. I'm bringing back the Man Titan podcast very soon, coming back off of some hiatus again. As you can tell, I got some stuff I got to do. Um, so we'll bring it back for that. I will be having a permanent co-host with that. Um, I'm working on a new show uh, that I'm going to do that is going to be Somewhat in the vein of what Blurds was, but it's going to be a whole lot more real. There's no, like I said, there's no throwing under the bus. It's staying for the culture. It's staying on real. It's staying on raw. It's going to be like, yo, this is shit that needs to be said, and we're not pulling punches. We're not going to try to cater to people's feelings because they need to be told things straight up and honest the way things are. It's not from a optimistic or pessimistic perspective. It's from a realistic perspective. So that's coming soon. All right? Holla at y'all later. I'm out. Oh, if you want, by the time you see this, my birthday's on the 25th of August. So if you want to send birthday love, cash at Venmo, you can do all that. I'm out. Bye.